Hello everyone and welcome to the good old gamer. So as you guys have noticed, we are using Pop OS, which is a distribution of Debian, which is a Linux based operating system. Over the past few years, I've been keeping my eye on the progression of Linux gaming and I've been messing with this for a week or so now. And the results are very, very surprising. So I wanted to share that with you guys here today. Before we get started, if you like content like this, please smash that like button, please subscribe, please share with friends. That really does help out the channel. And the way that YouTube is going, it's really the only way for channels to really gain traction anymore is with your support. So I wanna thank you so much for that and let's get into it. All right, so installing Pop! OS is just like installing Windows. You get a flash drive, download the image and flash it on there. So I'm not gonna go through that as it's as straightforward as any other operating system. But the big thing about Pop! OS that I like is the fact that it's built for gaming or with gaming in mind at least. When you first start up the operating system, it already has Lutris pre-installed. Now, if you're a Windows user, you probably don't know what Lutris is, but this little program is the key to getting Linux gaming to the state where it is here today. So this is a program, like I said, it comes pre-installed. You can link your GOG account, your Steam account, your Humble Bundle uh, account, and if you want to play a game that's not a part of any of those, you could just go to Lutris and type in any game that you can possibly think of. So let's look for Overwatch. All right, so it pops up. So all you have to do is just hit install, and then it'll pop up with different versions. So if you're over in China and you want the Chinese version, hey, there it is. Uh, if you want to install the manual, there it is. But obviously, most people are just going to do the standard version. All you have to do is click install, follow the prompts. It will literally tell you everything that you need to get this game up and running and all of the dependencies, everything. So all you have to do is just basically click next, next, next until it is done. For example, just last night, I installed Crisis 3, which is an origin game. So once I go ahead and click on it and I hit play, it's going to go ahead and pop up with EA Origin, because it can't like do Origin and Crisis 3 at the same time, but I mean, that's fine. It goes ahead and gets Origin going, you just go under your library, and you can technically install any of your Origin games at this point, but like I said, I, I just did Crisis 3, just go to Crisis 3 just like you normally would, hit play, and there we are, we are now up and running. And I'm using an Xbox controller, so that works, no problem, all I had to do was plug it in, Linux just went ahead and figured it out. That's actually one of the biggest benefits to running Linux is you don't have to go running around installing drivers and downloading all sorts of stuff. Everything pretty much just works. Everything just works. It just works. Everything just works. All right, and here we are, we're up and running. This isn't running super fast because I'm using an RX 460, um, which obviously isn't the most powerful GPU in the world, but it runs, and it runs about as well as I would expect in RX 460 to run this game. So I just wanted to kind of show you guys that, yep, that's really all you got to do, and poof, you're up and running. GOG is one of the best ways to buy games because you actually own them because they're DRM free. But on here, all you have to do is just log in, and it'll actually pull in your entire library of games. And all you have to do, because you don't need an external, you know, program like Origin, you don't need GOG Galaxy, all you have to do is just click on the game, hit install, and then it'll just download straight from the GOG servers and install it with all of the dependencies that you need. So it's super, super easy. So outside of older games just working that are sometimes a pain in the butt to get to run on Windows, you also get more options using Lutris. So for example, here on uh, Diablo, over here on GOG, once I click on it, there are several different versions that I can download. So for example, we can get the uh, GOG version plus uh, Devolution X, which is basically like some fixes, make it run in widescreen. So just community patches and fixes. So I don't have to go out there and actually download any of that stuff. All I have to do is just select this version, hit install, wait until it downloads all of the files and programs that it needs. It already knows all the stuff that it's gotta go get. So there they go. All right, so once the game is installed, just launch it. Right, I'm just skipping on through here, and we'll go with TGOG. All right, whatever. And poof, there we go. We're up and running. We're playing Diablo. As you can see here, we have nice widescreen patch added in, so this way it fills up the whole screen instead of 4x3. 
And that's it. We're up and running. It's that easy. So in my eyes, this is actually far simpler to get specifically older games with, you know, patches and stuff up and running than even on Windows, which is pretty ironic when you think about it. Now, outside of Lutris, of course, you can run all your Steam games through that. But if you want, you can just run it through Steam as Steam does support uh, Linux very well. Now, the first thing that you want to do is when you get into Steam is go under settings and then you want to change it to the Steam beta update. This will allow you to install any game in your library and use Proton to try to run those games. Now, if you go down to Steam Play here, you can see the different versions of Proton that are available. Using Proton Experimental, that means it's like the latest beta version. That's what I have the games start using. Um, but for example, like Doom 2016 runs perfectly with 3.16-9. So that one will always run with this. That uh, game is basically designed with that one in mind. But you can try each different version on each game. So if the experimental one doesn't work, you can try some of the other ones. But honestly, I haven't really run into any issues here. Now, once you have that set up and you got the beta going, you just go through your library like normal and just download whatever games it is that you want. So these are the games that I tested and installed. The only game that didn't work is Grand Theft Auto 3. It just basically comes up with a black screen. This actually used to work using older versions of Proton. For some reason, it's not working now. I may have been using an NVIDIA card in that test system, so I'm not really sure what's going on. Uh, but this is a very difficult game to get up and running properly, even on Windows. So that's a game that I was kind of expecting some trouble. But every other game here runs absolutely no problem. In fact, Max Payne has an audio glitch where you need to use a community patch batch file to fix it to actually run the game properly on Windows. You don't need that here, which means you need less work to get this game running on Linux. Now, more interestingly was my experience with Doom 2016. So let me go ahead and load this up and show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so as I mentioned before, I'm using an RX 460 two gigabyte. And for the life of me, I could not get this game to run decently at all on a Windows PC. However, right here, you can see we're running at about 55 FPS-ish. This is running at 1080p, low settings, with temporal anti-aliasing. All right, and as we move throughout the level here, you're gonna notice that jump back up into much more playable frame rates. So, all right, now we're somewhere between 75, 80. It's gonna pretty much bounce between about 55 FPS all the way up to about 95 FPS. But as I said, on Windows, basically this was unplayable because it would keep dropping all the way down to about 20 or 30 FPS every couple of frames. There is an issue there where I believe it's a memory frame buffer issue. And under Linux, we don't have this problem. In Windows, I went ahead and tried doing .ini fixes and all sorts of hacks and tricks to get this game to work, but it just wouldn't. Here, we're getting basically a 60 FPS gameplay experience. With something like FreeSync, it wouldn't be a problem and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference anyway. Which is a bit ridiculous that under Linux, some games will actually run better than they do under Windows. And that was something I was not expecting. Typically, overall, if you see benchmarks, you see about a 20% drop going from Windows to Linux. But like I said, this game is unplayable on a Windows-based PC with this graphics card. At least for me, I couldn't get it to work. I even tried like all the fixes and stuff on the Steam forums. None of it worked. So yeah, I color me surprised. Like I said, I did not see that coming. But all right, let, let me go through the operating system a little bit. When you first load it up, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to download any drivers. Basically, it's the exact opposite of Windows. In fact, I've never used the web browser on this. Not once. Didn't need it. All I did was game, but still, I had no use for that during my testing because I don't have to go anywhere to do anything. You have this little pop shop app here, which will basically download any program that you want or need. So for example, if you wanted to get Steam instead of Lutris, like I did, just get the Steam installer, hit install, and then you're done. Um, if you want, I was going to say open office, but it actually comes pre-installed on here. But if you wanted something like uh, Caden Live, which is a video editing software, free by the way, if you just click on it, open it, install it. I tried it out. It's not as intuitive as the program that I use on Windows, but I paid $100 for that program instead of free. So... If I were using Caden Live from the beginning, I'd probably be just as proficient with that. But still, that's really awesome. 
And of course, they'll show you a bunch of apps and stuff that they have going on. So virtual machine manager, whatever you really need, you can just go in here. You don't have to go download stuff all over the internet. Um, RetroArch, that'd be a good one. So you want RetroArch, boom, there it is. Just install it. So it's very simple to get everything up and running here. <clears throat> and if there are any updates, this will actually have a number next to it. And it'll just be like an update button and it'll tell you all the stuff that you need to update. Uh, obviously I have everything updated, so there we go. My overall experience with Pop! OS is very positive. It's super easy to use. And if you're primarily just using the machine for gaming, it doesn't get any easier than this. This is much simpler to use than Windows. There's a lot less stuff that you need to worry about. It's basically all done for you. You just go to the app and download whatever you need to. So I really like that. It's a very streamlined process. Like I said, older games, they're, they just run on Linux, whereas on Windows, you need to find community-created patches and all sorts of other stuff to get these games working. You know, DirectX 7, DirectX 8 games, it's a real pain in the butt. On here, they're all converted to OpenGL or Vulkan, and all modern GPUs can handle that. So it just makes things super easy on older games, and of course, you can run newer games no problem. So I can absolutely recommend Pop! OS, especially if gaming is the primary thing that you do on your PC. If you want to get away from Windows, you want to get away from the security vulnerabilities. Um, when you first install Pop! OS, it asks if you want to encrypt your drive. There are tons more security features on here than there ever were in Windows, at least by default that they, you know, prompt you with and make explicit. So to me, this is much more secure. It's easier to get up and running. It's free, which is awesome and perfectly capable of doing any basic task out there. Your office work, your internet browsing, Spotify, Discord, all that stuff. It's all on there. All you have to do is just go to the shop, download whatever you want, and you're up and running. Alrighty, guys, I want to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. Have you tested these operating systems out? Are you trying to move away from Windows? Are you one of those people that are like, hey, maybe Microsoft has a little bit too much control. I don't really like the fact that they basically spy on everything that I do. Maybe it's time to move over. I'm kind of in that boat. I kind of don't care. But at the same time, I'd rather Microsoft get away from my stuff. So finding alternate solutions, not bad. Uh, personally, I have to find a video editor that works for me and I may actually move away from Windows, but I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Once again, if you like these type of videos, please smash that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really does help me out. And that's really all I have for you guys here today. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.